Coming up on today's show, Audi is fined for diesel violations. The Kia e Nero scores a record in its home market. And Google Maps does what everyone's always wanted. They've added EV charging station info. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. In fact, wherever you are in the world, welcome to EV News Daily. It's Wednesday, 17th of October 2018. It's Martin Lee here. And I've been through every EV story I can find today. So you don't have to. Thank you to the gang at my EV. Com for helping make this show. In fact, they uh, put a little article online earlier today all about insuring your EV. Check that out if you're interested. One of the many things they do along with buying and selling your used EVs is free, uh, but also helping you learn and research about them as well. Only in North America, but check it out if you're lucky enough to have that website. Well, thank you to our latest member of the Patreon gang. It is you. Drum roll, please, Jack Oakley. Jack Oakley is the new executive producer of this show. Thank you very much, Jack. Checking out patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. A quick public service announcement. Uh, There's a uh, a free seminar called Myths and Facts about Electric Vehicle Economics, Safety and Range. And it's a free seminar happening in uh, in Canada. Bruce, Bruce Nagy is doing it. Special guest Bill Pollock, friend of the podcast, director of operations for Charge Car Canada as well. It's next Tuesday, October 23rd, 7pm, Community Centre 55 in Toronto, if you're interested. We'll start with the big news today, and Audi, a division of Volkswagen, said it was fined 800 million euros. That is within touching distance of a billion dollars. For violations tied to the heavily polluting six- and eight-cylinder diesel engines, as per Reuters, Audi accepts the fine and will not lodge an appeal against it. By doing so, it said it admits its responsibility for the deviations from regulatory requirements. VW Group received a similar billion euro fine in June when prosecutors also used a so-called administrative order to publish VW, a punish VW, for oversight problems which allowed millions of polluting cars to hit the roads. Just not good enough legacy car makers an oversight. I like how they say it's an oversight problem. Yeah, I can think of some other words. But I can also think of the heartbreaking thing here that that's another $2 billion that could have been spent on R&D for EV and battery drivetrains and storage and all those kind of things. Just think how much closer they would be to Tesla if they'd spent their money that way, not spending 20-something. It's in the mid-20s now, isn't it? Billion dollars from the fallout of Dieselgate. If that money hadn't had to go to fines and making good what they've done, but instead spent on R&D for a cleaner, less polluting, brighter future for our kids and our children's children, think of where we'd be. It's kind of heartbreaking. Still, we're on the right road, I think. Well, moving on to Kia, a company, uh, the Hyundai Motor Group, the kind of Hyundai and Kia sister companies, as we heard earlier this week on the podcast, don't make money from their EVs. Really? They do it as a brand halo effect. Maybe it's new, maybe it's something that I've not seen before, but I just saw before I came out here to record that Kia have just started, well, I think they've just started, featuring the Kia e Nero very prominently as the lead item, big picture, top of the page, on their UK homepage of their website. With some text, it says this, the all-new Kia e Nero is the only mid-size SUV car available. It offers combined all-electric, zero-emissions powertrain and crossover practicality, intelligent packaging and eye-catching design. When powered by the high-capacity 64-kilowatt-hour lithium-ion polymer battery pack, the all-new Kia e Nero will do 301 miles on a single charge. And plugged into a 100-kilowatt fast charger, it takes only 54 minutes to recharge, the 64 kilowatt hour battery to 80%. And alongside that, Kia today hit a new record in its home market of South Korea. The September sales figures are out, and that record is that they sold over a thousand electric cars in a single month. And how do they do that? Well, they did it with the Kia e Nero or the Kia Nero EV, where whatever it's particularly being called this week in whatever market they're selling it in. At least here in the UK, it's called the e-Nero. The e-Nero slash Nero EV uh, is uh, currently representing a new generation of EVs from the Hyundai Kia Automotive Group. Uh, Range, not a problem. Availability, 
and price, well, that is a problem for the people that want them and don't want to have to wait 40 weeks to get one. Well, it's certainly in the case of the Hyundai Kona. I can't speak uh, for the near Kia e-Niro, of course. Moreover, the Nero EV will be joined by the next-gen Kia Soul EV next year, according to Pedro at Push EVs. Also last month, Kia's sister company Hyundai sold 102 units of the Ionic Electric that's uh, 1,382 units of the Kona Electric. On top of that, it was a good month of sales for the electric cars coming out of Hyundai and Kia. Interesting to see what they can do in October. Well, talking of the Ionic, shall we stay with that? Because there was a story today that surprised me and delighted me when the Hyundai Ionic Electric went on sale last year. It offered one of the industry's most compelling set of EV features, 124 miles of range, but a very cheap price at $30,000, a very efficient EV, and a lot of passenger and cargo room. According to Bradley Berman for Inside EVs, Hyundai's senior group manager for alternative vehicle strategy. His name is Gil Castillo, and he was on a drive of the Kona Electric last week with Inside EVs. And he said this, and I quote, the Ionics range will improve with the model year change. It will get bigger. It will be a nice improvement, but not like the Kona's range. It doesn't matter that the Ionic has better fuel economy. That doesn't matter as much as the body style, which is so much more important, end quote. So, uh, you know, I've tweeted Kia cheeky, cheekily, tongue-in-cheek over the last few weeks and months to say, oh, uh, any news on the, uh, the Ionic bigger battery that's coming and i always got a polite public reply being hey we have no plans to change the battery well we we know something we know a bigger battery is coming just nobody will confirm it and then it took one of their senior management to uh, maybe not tow the pr line someone's having a pr nightmare today like you didn't you didn't say it was going to get a bigger battery did you oh no it's out there now well it is so we know the ionic is coming with the model year change we don't know when or the size of the battery but it no we know it won't be 64 uh, kilowatt hours. However, there is a battery pack that is going inside the. I mean, as far as I know, it's the same size, but from two different manufacturers. So LG Chem and SK Innovation. It's the 39.2 kilowatt hour battery pack that is going in the E Nero and the Kona. Now, you put that in a smaller, lighter, more efficient Ionic, and that range is going to be mightily impressive. I'm just saying it would make sense if they've got them on order. They've got a battery contract for those two sizes and all the packaging, all the active thermal management, all the things that come with that, all of the software written to control it, all of those things that why would you make a slightly different battery pack? Well, just order more of those or is that simplistic? Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to see the Hyundai Ioniq with a 40 kilowatt hour pack. That's about 12 odd kilowatt hour improvement on the one that's in it at the moment. And already... The range of the current Ionique is really good because of its incredible efficiency. Right, moving on. And this is perhaps one of the biggest... I should have put this first, really, in the in the running order, but I want to get to things like cars and diesel fines. But in many ways, this is huge news. Google Maps have added EV charging station info. Following a recent update to the Google Maps app for the phones and tablets... Uh, You can now plan your commutes and group events. Google Maps now helping EV drivers specifically figure out where to charge en route. A new feature is rolling out today. So if you haven't got the update yet, I've just looked at my app store because I I run iOS on my iPhone and it was last updated over a week ago. So that's definitely, uh, I'll put it on charge tonight. Hopefully it'll auto update overnight. Maybe the uh, app is taking just a couple of days to push out to app stores and and, uh, Google Play. However, this app, that's just been released today the updated uh, google maps app is going to provide you with more useful information according to mallory locklear at engadget search for ev charging stations or search for ev charging those two phrases ev charging stations or ev charging google maps will locate the nearest ones to you and it'll tell you what type of ports are available how many there are as well as the station's charging speeds now in the us it's going to feature source info from c Connect, 
EVgo and Blink. In the UK, it's going to tell you the charge master and pod point stations. In Australia and New Zealand, it's going to char. It's going to show you the charge fox stations. As for other territories, well, still TBC. But that hopefully will cut down. How many have I got? So in this folder, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I mean, that might be overkill. Uh, Zap Map Plug Share are the first two I go. Then obviously being a Polar Plus member, then it's that an electric highway from Ecotricity. Uh, then I've got some stuff that I use when I'm talking about stories around the world. So Charge Point, uh, What's Up, which is great here in the UK for journey planning. Charge Map, Fast Ned. When I see what want to see what they're doing in Europe, Charge Your Car, Pod Point. Uh, there's quite a lot in this folder actually. <laughs> it's on several pages. You know what? Having just be able to go into uh, the Google Maps app and say plan a route or something and, and have like the main stations on that would be really really useful and especially if you run android and your cars have android auto or even carplay from apple it just makes it super super simple right okay well let's move on and talk about some more big uh, investment happening in the space xl energy is going to invest more than 25 million dollars to promote EVs. It's a, a filing with the Minnesota Public Utilities Commission that we picked this up from. XL Energy has announced a range of programs that expand upon its support of EVs already. Picking this up from the Renewable Energy magazine today. So for residential customers, XL Energy uh, are going to offer more options like a subscription service for EV drivers, which offers you a set bill no matter how much you charge at home. Now, I know that there's, uh, I think maybe it's a grandfathered in tariff in Australia. I'm not sure whether it's still open for new customers in Australia, but I kind of like that. Do you know what I mean? Like, I kind of like, as long as it's not crazy expensive, if it was something that you thought, you know what, I do most of my charging at home overnight, I don't really do too many long journeys, and you just knew your monthly cost for EV charging. That would be super interesting to me. Does your local energy provider, where you listen around the world, offer something similar that I don't know about? Please let me know and I'll pass it on. You can email the show, hello at evnewsdaily.com or leave us a comment on the blog or YouTube or Facebook. Well, XL Energy is working on a fast charging corridor pilot. It's going to leverage public and private funds to increase the availability of the fast charging stations, mainly on highways and major corridors. XL Energy is also hoping to make it easier and more affordable for fleet operators like Metro Transit, and the Minnesota Department of Administration and the city of Minneapolis to integrate EVs into their fleets. I'll put a full link to that in the show notes. Well, new data suggests that one particular automaker in the US has been Googled more than any other. I won't leave you too long to ponder that one. It is indeed Tesla. According to carbars.com, the data was segregated by nation next. And that gives us an interesting look at which brands were searched for in each country. North America... Easily, Tesla was the most searched for car maker over the last 12 months, given the headlines around Elon Musk, not surprised, and the amazing products they make. Google recorded more than 2 million searches for the brand uh, in US and Canada. Well, Tesla is also the most, most searched for automaker if you go to China. Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, Norway, Barbados, and the Cayman Islands. Also, Bahamas, Bermuda, they love their Teslas. In Europe, however, the story is different and perhaps more conventional for Europe. German manufacturers make up the majority. France, Spain, Italy, and Latvia searched for Volkswagen most of all. In Germany, the UK and the Netherlands, and Portugal and Belgium, the most was Mercedes-Benz. Well, moving on, and we've talked about charging a little bit so far, but this is a great piece of charging news. Tesla's going to be beefing up its vehicle charging infrastructure in Hong Kong to help lure back some of those customers that, after the end of the city's tax breaks, caused a sales dip. According to Bloomberg, destination charging facilities are ideal for people who work and live and shop in a certain area. And according to a Tesla spokeswoman, superchargers, the option that you can use while on the road, and can charge 50% of your battery in 20 minutes, and not what's being used here. These are destination chargers, but there's 50 of them in a row. Actually on two floors, I think, which is stunning. A link to that article in the show notes. And the final story today, and I got an email from one of the podcast supporters, Karthik, who asked me, what's the latest with the uh, Jaguar I-Pace? I never hear you talking about it lately. Well, the Jaguar I-Pace has just been named the Sunday Times, that's a newspaper, Sunday Times Car of the Year. The I-Pace was also named the Green Car of the Year. That's its fifth major award since its reveal in March earlier this year. The I-Pace can do 
0 to 80% battery charge in 85 minutes on DC fast charging. That's 50 kilowatt speeds, and the range is up to 292 miles on a single charge if you aren't too heavy with your right foot. Home charging on the approved Jaguar wall box runs at 7 kilowatts. You can do a 0 to 80% charge in about 10 hours. Well, the iPace is Jaguar's first vehicle to include the Touch Pro Duo int- infotainment system. Uh, it can do over the air software updates and it uses artificial intelligence to work out your own driving preferences and it ensures the driving and infotainment settings are matched to the driver that is in the vehicle at the time. While sales figures in countries around Europe are in the tens and the hundreds per country and not in the tens of thousands per country, uh, deliveries are ramping up and I'll take a look into those figures as uh, I get some time just to work out how many are being delivered. Of course, with the car not being made by Jaguar themselves, but using a third party to make the car, then I wonder how easy that is to scale up if they've got more orders or even scale it down if it hadn't been successful. We know now that the I-Pace has had a fantastic reaction and it is a wonderful, wonderful car. A car that, may I add, I haven't driven yet, uh, but my dad has a recent event in East Anglia, which I mentioned on the podcast a uh, few days ago. If you haven't caught up with that podcast yet, or maybe even you are new to the podcast, uh, there was an uh, an EV event uh, with people like uh, EO Charging were there and also uh, the Jaguar I-Pace was there, which Uh, uh, my dad had a go in and liked quite a lot well thank you very much for listening to today's podcast the saturday specials do return this weekend after a slight break a short break after my uh travels i've been on the road a little bit actually and it's been pretty hard to sit down and do interviews and even line up the interviews it's been uh, just super busy however they return this weekend as we talk to we make a we make a splash with our saturday specials as they they've been away for a couple of weeks they come back this weekend with not one but two incredible names in the world of ev charging and i'll tell you more as we get towards the weekend all about making ev charging frictionless maybe the next ev that you buy will be one that you just turn up to the charger and just plug it in and everything else just happens in the background or things like billing and knowing that it's you and that it's your car and who owns the charge point none of that will be visible to you at all i will tell you more details as we get towards the weekend but this is going to be a fascinating saturday special uh, they return on the weekend thank you to myev.com for setting this week's question of the week and keep your comments coming in on email and on the blog there's a feedback form on the blog also the youtube comments and facebook here's the question this week what's more important the size of the battery or battery efficiency because at the minute we don't seem to get both we have things like the hyundai ioniq which has a small battery but is really really efficient whereas we have some of the new german cars that have come out that perhaps like maybe say the audi e-tron quattro suv with its 90 kilowatt hour plus battery and yet maybe it isn't quite as efficient yet uh, some of its competition so they make up for that maybe with a bigger battery uh, maybe that is something that you want to comment on uh, what would you rather the big battery that doesn't do quite as many miles per kilowatt hour or a more efficient battery carrying less weight but maybe you've got to stop more often because that battery is a little bit smaller uh, well let me know if you have a thought on that thank you very much to the 103 patrons of the podcast whose generosity means that you get the show every day and if you would like to be one of that gang uh, check out patreon.com slash ev news daily there's 267 previous free podcasts for you to download anytime you want to leave a little rate or a review would be amazing podcast on the usual places you get your podcasts from and on the socials just search ev news daily have a wonderful day today and i'll catch you tomorrow